My name is Ashley Egan, and this is my final assignment for AEP 855 over race, class, access, gender, and equity. The two articles that I chose to do this assignment over were called A Cultural Approach to establish Establishing Equity and Closing the Educational Achievement Gap by Pedro R. Portis and Gender Equity Issues in CTE and STEM Education, Economic and so Social Implications by Thomas V. Toglia. I found both of these articles by searching equity in education on the ERIC database. Um, I specifically chose the article that was by Toglia because it relates to my current teaching position, which is a family and consumer science teacher. Um, I'm in CTE education, career and technical education, for those of you who do not know what that is. And the article by Portas discusses closing the achievement gap, which has been a major theme at our school last year, considering that we are still having a lot of issues with um, getting our African American populations and special ed populations to where they need to be in order to um, really achieve, uh, get that achievement gap closed. Summary of the first article, The Cultural Approach to Establishing Equity. Um, this one discussed the achievement gap and it states that it is not closing despite some of the reports that have been given by different groups. Most poor and English learning children become and remain at risk during the K-12 through period. They not only start out behind but they also stay behind through the entire um, educational, through their entire, entire educational time. And in order to cl close that gap and have equal education for all, education needs to be restructured. It needs to, things need to change. We need to get more hands on so that everyone has the opportunity to learn where they need to be. And in order to restructure, one of their suggestions was that we have to guarantee all children's right to learn at grade level. So that's the most important thing, is that they have to be able to be at grade level, not just constantly behind. The summary of the second article, which talked about gender equity, um, it started off talking about the Title IX Amendment and how it's not only for athletics, but it's also for the career technical education and the STEM programs. It talks about how the gender divide in current tech ed has not had a significant change in 30 years, so it's pretty much stayed the same. There's still a lot more um, men in the fields of heating and air conditioning, um, construction, while girls are, are the majority in cosmetology and fields like that. Um, general socialization, parent expectations, and guidance counselors all contribute to women and girls' career choices. So these are the things that are learned from a very early age. And a lot of times it's a, said that guidance counselors do not have the type of training they need in gender equity in order to help either girls or boys pursue careers that are less likely that they are less likely to go into. And like I said before, these, uh, this gender equity is faced by men as well, like men in the nursing field. There's not nearly as many men in the nursing field as there are women. So in order to hopefully combat this, this equity problem, we want to develop more mentoring programs, remove any materials that are gender biased from curriculum, and have gender, gender equity professional development so that we can improve that in education. Um, some of the leadership challenges relating back to the book, um, Peter Northhouse's leadership theory and practice, he not only addresses gender equity but also some cultural aspects of leadership and he discusses how women are significantly underrepresented in major leadership positions. I mean it's, it's a um, statistic that is overwhelming. Um, also, he talks about how cultures desire different characteristics of leadership, however, all cultures do have similar ideas as to the negative and positive characteristics of leaders. So even though they may um, choose some characteristics as higher or better for their leaders, they still have the same group of positive characteristics for their leaders. 
Not only that, but gender equity and CTE and STEM closely relates to those issues regarding gen gender equity and leadership because women have been found to be no less effective in leadership roles yet are underrepresented, underrepresented the same way that they are in certain career fields. Cultural challenges with students who are limited English proficient can lead to leadership inequity as well. We have that universally desired set of leadership qualities, so anyone can become a great leader if they are given the correct tools for learning and that we are able to get them at the correct level of learning. In order to address these issues, leaders in the classroom, because I am a family consumer science teacher, um, we can put an end to these equity issues by changing the culture of the classroom, making it a more welcome and environment. Uh, welcome environment for all students. Um, we need to increase mentoring opportunities. I specifically think about um, the girls in my class and giving them the opportunity to explore um, different um, career paths instead of just, you know, because they're girls they are going to take sewing classes and maybe become a fashion designer. That's that's not the way it should be. They should be able to explore anything that, that interests them. That goes right along with the providing career exploration activities and recognizing achievements, recognizing achievements of everyone, whether it's a little achievement or a big achievement, letting them know that all their contributions to the classroom are important as well. And just treating students equally, giving them fair opportunities within the classroom, and making sure that everyone feels like they have their own place in the classroom. Thank you.